In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, Chapter 3, Programming Fundamentals in Assembly Language. Uh, we start uh, by talking about the basic uh, language elements. First, we are going to take a look at uh, a simple assembly language program. It has a main procedure. Main PROC is the beginning of uh, the main function. Main NP is the end of the main function. Just like any other programming languages, when you write a program, you must have at least a main function, no matter if it's in C++, in C, or in Java. Same thing here. We have a main procedure. You must have at least one main function. Inside this main function, we have three lines of statement. The first line is move statement. Uh, we're going to move value file into register UAX. Semicolon, this is the comments. Uh, comments are documentation for the code, so there are no action for uh, phrase or statements. Second line statement is add uh, six, uh, six value into register UAX. Uh, this is uh, common. The third line statement is invoke uh, exit process, uh, argument zero. So this is a function call from the library to call library function exit process to end the program. To learn assembly language programming is not hard, but sometimes it can be tricky or obscure. However, by learning programming language, you can see the low-level uh, statements. Uh, you can see what's going on on the computer's hardware. Uh, continue with this uh, example, we can add in a variable declaration. We put a variable sum uh, under the dot data directive or data segment. All the variables you want to use in your assembly program, you have to declare them under the dot data directive. Here we have a variable sum. The storage size for sum is uh, 32 bits. Double word means 32 bits long. The initial value is zero. When we declare variable in assembly language, we don't say integer float the string, we just uh, specify the size for the storage. And later you're going to see uh, other storage size like uh, word, byte, um, quad word. So the data directory or data segment uh, is used uh, to declare variables. Uh, so this is uh, also called a data segment. Uh, is a section in the main memory and used to hold the variables. The main function goes into the dot code directory or code segment. Uh, code segment also is a storage area in the main chips used to hold uh, statements, executable statements. Continue, uh, we're going to talk about the integer literals. Uh, integer literals uh, also known as uh, integer constant. Uh, uh, integer constant can have a sum positive or negative, also can have a radix uh, character after the value. Here we have an example. If we write a 26H, that means this is a has a decimal number. H means has a decimal number. H is a radix. If we just write a 26, and uh, we mean this is a decimal value. So when you write a decimal value, you don't have to write a radix like uh, D. Uh, it's option. So when you see a value without a radix, it's by default uh, the decimal values. For binary inter, integer constant, we use uh, 
the radix b. Uh, for octal numbers uh, is uh, q or o. We don't cover octal numbers in this book, so you don't have to worry about this one. I is for encoded real. Uh, we don't have to do this. Uh, T is for decimal alternate. Now Y is the binary alternate. We could just use this. We don't have to use any alternate uh, uh, radix. Uh, we have a few examples here. 20 is uh, decimal, 20D also is uh, decimal, uh, binary, uh, Q means this is octal, this is uh, octal, uh, this is uh, hexadecimal, uh, this is another hexadecimal. When you have a hexadecimal number, start with a uh, letter, like A, B, C, D, E, F, you have to put a, a zero in the front. This is a convention. See, this is the node you must remember. Okay, let me highlight this. Uh, so this is about a uh, constant uh, integers. Let's talk about the uh, uh, integer expressions. We need uh, to evaluate the uh, integer expressions. Uh, when we evaluate the integer expressions, we follow the precedence rules. Uh, evaluate the uh, operation inside the parentheses first. That's the first priority. Then we evaluate the plus minus, unary plus minus like uh, increase by 1, decrease by 1 in C++. Plus plus. Now after this, we're going to evaluate the multiply divide operations. Multiply divide and the modular operation, these three are in the same level. They are level 3 operations. Uh, last thing we do when we evaluate the expression is uh, to do the add uh, or subtract. Here uh, we have a few examples. 12 minus 1 module 5, we have to uh, evaluate the 1 module 5. Uh, this is going to give us 1, so 12 minus 1, the result from this one should be 11. This one, we have parentheses, we add 4 with 2, then multiply by 6. So we have a few more examples. 25 module 3, the remainder is 1. Okay, for this one, you add 3 with 4, then with 6 minus 1. Finally, you put this result, multiply it with this result. Real number literals. Uh, this is about the decimal number, like you have a number 3.5, 10.9. There are real number literals or real number constants. Uh, you also can call them floating point literals. Uh, they can be represented uh, as uh, the decimal rules or encoded uh, as a decimal rules. This is uh, decimal rules. Uh, you start with uh, you start with plus minus sign, uh, the integer part, a decimal point, then the decimal part. You also can use a scientific notation like this one for. 44.2 times 10 to the positive 5th power. Included the real for decimal numbers is in a decimal format. Uh, for this binary number is representing decimal positive 1.0. If we write in uh, assembly language we're going to write uh, 3F0000R. So this is uh, the encoded uh, hexadecimal for positive 1.0. For character literals, uh, we, sing we use a single code or double code uh, to call the uh, string literal. In C++, we know we, we just need to use uh, single code, but uh, in assembly language, you can use uh, either single code or double code to, to call the uh, 
to representing uh you know the character literals. The character literals are stored internally as integers. Uh, in the chapter one or two, we have talked about SMA uh, tables in the back of the textbook. So when you write the uppercase A, internally it is going to be stored as uh, number 65 or has a decimal 41. You can check your book uh, SMA table at the end of their book. Okay. For string literals, yeah. uh, it's a sequence of uh, characters. Uh, we enclose them in a single double quote. So you can use a single quote, double quote for uh, uh, character literal, or you can use a single double quote for string literals. <laughs> Reserve the words. Uh, the, they have special meanings, and you cannot uh, use them, uh, you know, to name your variables, or your labels, or uh, other things. Uh, here, uh, we have a few examples about uh, reserved words. Instruction mnemonics, uh, such as move, add, uh, multiply. There are three letters uh, the nomenclature. There are executable statements uh, you're going to use uh, to write the uh, you know statement. So don't use the keywords like uh, uh, more add uh, m u l. Uh, register names are reserved words uh, like e x e b s e c s e d x e e b b e e s i e d i stuff. Directives. Uh, to have the assembler how to assemble your program. So we don't, uh, you know, use them to name variables uh, or labels. And we have mentioned uh, the in a simple main program, like here. And we have dot data directive, dot code directive. So dot data, dot code are keywords. Uh, So some other keywords like by the word, double word, there are you know specified storage size. We don't use this to name our variables. Identifiers uh, is a chosen name by a programmer to name your variable, your constant, your procedure, or code labels. We must have a valid identifier. Uh, there are rules we have to follow. For example, uh, your identifier may contain between 1 to 247 characters. Identifier in assembly language is not case sensitive because uh, assembly language is a low level language, it's not so strict. The first uh, character must be a letter or underscore or uh, add a question mark or dollar sign. You cannot start your uh, identifier by a digit. This is true in C++, C or Java. Never name a variable uh, by beginning with a digit. So don't use the reserved word for your identifier. So it's always a good idea to use meaningful names for identifiers. And we should have a good habit when we do no matter high level programming or low level programming. Directives, we have mentioned the two in the previous uh, uh, section. Dot data directive or data segment, dot code segment. So dot data segment or dot data directive 
give us an uh, area in the memory, allow us to declare variables. A memory space can be used to hold your variables value. To define your data area or data segment, you start by dot data. So each is there assembly language programming. If you need to declare variable, you have to start by write dot data. And follow this, you can declare variables. In assembly language programming, you want to start uh, your executable code, you have to start with a dot code. Then you write your main procedure or any other procedures. There is a dot uh, stack directive. Uh, stack structure. Uh, there is a running stack manipulated by operating system. Uh, dot stack directive. Uh, can be used to declare a uh, stack segment and declare the stack uh, uh, size. Instructions is a statement. Uh, that is executable code. Uh, when we write assembly code, we use assembler to translate assembly code into machine binary code. We use uh, Microsoft Visual Studio to translate. There is a built-in assembler inside Visual Studio. You can use uh, Visual Studio 2012, 2017. It's up to you. But however, you need to watch videos to see how to configure or set up your computer to run the code for this class. Our construction may have a label, uh, may have a uh, instruction mnemonic. Uh, label is optional, but for each instruction, if they are executable, you must have a mnemonic. This is required, not optional. Uh, operands are usually required. Uh, comment uh, optional. We use comment to doc document the, 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 the coding. So this is the format for uh, instruction in assembly. Optional label, required a monomic, followed by operands, and followed by comment. Uh, first, we're going to talk about uh, uh, the label. Label is a valid identifier. Uh, it's a place marker to mark the beginning of an instruction or mark the beginning of a data. If you put a label just before the instruction, it means that's the address for the instruction. Uh, if you put a, a label just before the variable's declaration, that means that label is the variable's name or variable's address. A data label. And you put a count as a double word size, you initialize it with 100. So count is a data label. Uh, count is a variable name. Uh, this also means the memory address. Uh, so this is a variable, uh, a data label. So assembler uh, assigns a numeric address to each label. So that label can be for data, can be for uh, instruction. It just means address. Here we have an uh, array. We can declare arrays uh, in assembly language. This is how we declare arrays uh, here. We, we start an uh, array. This is not a keyword. This is just an uh, identifier. Then the array data type is a double word. Data type means storage size in assembly language. We use 32 bits, it's a double word. Uh, we initialize this array with four values, 1024, 2048, 1496, 8192. All these four are decimal values because we don't use the radix at the end of the value. Uh, 
when you declare an array in assembly language, you can uh, use multiple lines. Uh, this is how you turn the line. So here, you don't use a comma. You just uh, continue with the second line with a double word again and uh, two another values. So these four values here uh, all belong to array name. Every name, uh, every uh, is a label. Is every name is also a address for this array. So every name means the first uh, uh, first uh, elements address. Uh, we can calculate uh, all these uh, other three address because all these three will follow the first one immediately. Literally. So if we know there's each of these take a size 32 bits, if we know this one's address, we can add four bytes to get this one's address, get a, add another one, four bytes to get this address, then add another four bytes to get this one's address. Because each of these two uh, variables are four bytes apart. Uh, this is an example to show us how to put a label before an instruction. So if we put a label before the instruction, uh, we are making a marker as the address of this statement. Uh, if we want to write a loop, uh, probably we are going to do this in chapter 5. This is the end of your jumping loop. You want to jump back to the beginning, so you have to jump to this statement. This statement has a label, that means you want to jump back to this address. And from this example, we can see why we need a label for our instruction. We want to know its address, so we can jump to it. This is a statement. Uh, in this statement, we move bis into ax register. This is 16 bit, half uax, half ebx. So we have bx, ax. We move, we copy bs value into ax. So this is a statement. The statement and the nominator is move. Uh, we have two operands, ax and bx. L1 is uh, the label, so it uh, represents the address for this statement. Uh, instruction mnemonic uh, is always three letters long. It's like a short word. MOV uh, means move. We can transfer data from one, area, one variable to another variable, from one register to another register, or from register to variable or variable to, to register. This is addition uh, instruction, subtraction instruction, multiply instruction, jump instruction, call procedure instruction. Mm. Uh, operand is a value. Uh, is used for input or output for instruction. In this example, we have two operands, AX and BX. Both are registers. Mm. Sometimes the oper operand can be a constant value. Some of the instruction mnemonics don't need operands like uh, STC is a uh, statement, no operand. Uh, the meaning for this one is said uh, the carry flag. We had talked about the uh, E-flex register in previous uh, video. So this instruction is going to set the carry bit in the E-flex to be one. It's called flag on. Uh. Some of the instructions need uh, just one operand. Uh, I can see it's going to increase the uh, register UX by one. Uh, DEC is going to decrease uh, UX by one. 
So this is a uh, instruction. This statement uh, has uh, just one operand, UAS. Uh, this is uh, a typical uh, statement or instruction. We have a uh, mnemonic for instruction, and we have two operands. This uh, is uh, about a data transfer. We're going to copy what whatever is in register EBS into variable count. Comments uh, are important uh, when you write the code. Uh, you want uh, to document your your coding, uh, or you can write a comment to explain your code. Your comment should be descriptive. Uh, make it a uh, concise, uh, uh, brief, and but meaningful. You can write the comments uh, in two ways. Single line comments, we use a semicolon. For block comments, uh, we start with by keyword comment, then a pair of symbols. Uh, for this example, you, we use exclamation marker to mark out the block of these comments. Uh, this block uh, are now executable statements. You can use a question marker here or use question marker here. If you mark the beginning and the end, uh, everything in the middle uh, are disabled. That means they are now executable. Another example, use ampersand as a pair to represent the block of your comments. NOP is uh, no operation instruction. The saves uh, instruction. It takes up one byte of program storage and doesn't do any work. Sometimes used by compiler and assembler to align code to efficient address boundaries. I don't use this much, so it's not much meaningful to me. Thank you for watching this video.